Hi, welcome back all of you. Nana here and then uh, today we are going to begin the vendor managed inventory. Right. So what exactly it is we are going to see now. So let us now go on and share my screen now. So click on share screen. So I am not going to have an item where to maintain the min max is very difficult with our employee. With the company employee, it is now becoming increasingly different. You are, there are more than 500 items are there. If the company employees are not able to maintain the min max levels very properly, then what happens? We will now land up in a problem. The production may even stop. So we wanted to outsource it to an external supplier, actually. That is the concept. So let us now create an item, right? And then we will now outsource it to a supplier. Then click on the home icon and then go to there. What's called the product management. So the maintenance of the stock levels are outsourced to an external supplier. That is what the concept is, concept of vendor managed inventory. Come on, now go there, come on. I will now go to what? I will now go to uh, product management, and then I go to the product information management. Here I am going to outsource the maintenance of the stock levels. Because our company employee, if they don't maintain it properly by creating a min-max, we only can shout on them. Whereas if it is an external agency, we can even terminate them. Fine. He will no more be a VMA supplier, actually. Click on it. So that is the biggest advantage. So outsourcing is the order of the day. So many people follow the outsourcing concept, actually. And don't go there. Let us now do it on a 000R. This is a normal item only. And then click on OK now. And then have a look at it whether it is not coming as approved or not. Otherwise, we will not change the item class, actually. It is not coming as approved. It's OK. Fine. Go there. Come on. I will not say, I will not say use yes 01 I will not say VMI. Let's go item. So since I'm not, I'm not using a different uh, prefix actually for this VMI, right? So VMI item is the one where whatever you take a copy of it and then go to the description. Go down. Now what happens? I go to the what's called here. Everything is there. Fine. All these things are what are the specifications? In the specifications in the purchasing, I will not give a list price. Go to the purchasing and then give a list price. The price on which we are going to buy it. <coughs> and then you go to the planning. You click on the planning. And then I will now say this item is going to be what happens, stock levels are going to be maintained by the supplier. I can drop it down. So it is not min max planning, it is not a reorder point planning, it is a supplier managed one. So choose the supplier managed. And then I will now keep a minimum of about 100 and then 200. Right. So item by default will be having some levels actually. The supplier has to maintain 100 200. <laughs> that is what you say. So go there. So the item is now created. Let me assign it to my child or 001 now. It is a supplier managed item. Fine. Go to the associations and then let me associate with the child org. So go to actions and then here select mat. You can add it. It's a 001. Org. Entering. So go that one. Select it and then click on apply. And then click on that by which what happens. The item is going to be maintained at the supplier level. So go there. So it's not done. Go there. So we are not maintained or 100 and 200. And go that on it. And then give a save and close. Fine. The item is now S01. VMI item is now created. Now, let us now go and then create a supplier for this. So, the supplier, we will now load all the values. Whatever we have set up, whatever we are going to load it. And then, before which, before creating a supplier, whatever I will now, whatever, go there and then I will now go to what? Manage. Sub inventory somewhere. And then I will now go there. I will now go to the place, fine, click on it. I will now go to the search, now fine, click on it. I will now go to the manage sub inventory locators. So, manage percentage, fine. Sub percentage, look up percentage. I will not go there. I will not query for it. And then I will not query with the organization 001. No. So, go there. so I'm already in the 001. Fine. Choose the stores. Fine. Store is the one. I will not click on the manage items of inventories. This is the highest restriction in Oracle now. Fine. Click on it. So, in this place, whatever I'm going to restrict my item actually. Click on it. This is the highest restriction. Fine. Click on it. And then click on plus. No. Fine. I'm going to restrict my item. So, yes, 01 is an item. Fine. Go there. Click on it. I will not put the item over here. Mm. So, go there. Click on it. I will not put the item. Fine. This is yes, 01. Mm -hmm. And then wait for it. I mean, have to be done. L01, VMA item. So the inventory planning method is what? Supplier managed. It is not min-max planning. It is a supplier managed. So I will now here keep a quantity of about 300 or 400. So we have to communicate to the supplier either 100 or 200 or 300 or 400. Fine. One of them we have to communicate. So we have both options basically. Either to do it from the org level. Org level is 100 and 200. And then the sub-inventory level is what? 300 and 400. Fine. The store sub -inventory. Go there, drop it on, and then make it as a supplier. Actually. So click on save and close. So we have done the item sub inventory restrictions for our item where we are saying that it is going to be managed by the supplier. Actually, supplier is going to manage. Click on save and close. So the item is now fully created. Actually. 
So supply is good, man. Now, quickly, man. Supply is no good. Quickly, man. So now this is not done. Now we will now go and then create our supplier actually. So before creating a supplier, what you have to do is you click on turn off fan. We'll not see whether there is no approvals at all involved. Now, click on turn off fan. We have to bypass all the approvals actually and go to actions and then you go to the offerings and then bypass the approvals. Okay. So go to the place fan. I will go there. Click on the procurement. In the procurement, what happens? You go to the opt-in futures. No, I click on the opt-in futures, and then you go to the supplier. So now we don't want any approval. We already seen all the types of approvals actually. Approvals we already seen. So now we are going to bypass the supplier approval here. No, so go to the opt-in futures of the procurement. Now, fine, it must be enabled. Remember, if it is licensed, then only it will be coming as enabled actually. Opt-in futures is the one. I go that one. We are going to go to the opt-in futures, and then here we will now go there and then provide this information. So now he is taking the pains of maintaining the stock levels. He may be given some 50 different items also. Now we are doing only test up only in the ones, one item now. So he will be asked to what I'm going to do it now. So you go to the supplier, now, select the supplier, and then click on the futures, now I click on the futures, and then here we are going to bypass the approvals. So click on the futures. And then here we will now see whether the approval is required or not. We can even uh, get it approved. There are four different entities on which approval is required. And approve internal change approval, fine, click on the edit now. Here, what happens? You click on the enable icon. And then, so either address approval or bank account approvals or organization details and income tax approval or sites approval. So nothing is enabled. So no approvals are there. Fine, we can even do the approval on here. Fine, you can cancel. Fine. The approval is already by pass. Fine, exactly on that. So it's okay. Now we can go ahead and then create a supplier without any approvals actually. Now we are going to create a VMI supplier. We are going to create a VMI. So he will be interested the responsibility of maintaining more than 50 or 100 items. Fine, different items are there. So which what happens? He will know he has to replenish it. From the org level, that is item specifications of 100 and 200, or at the sub unit level, 300 and 400. So, this 100 and 200 and 300 and 400 will vary from item to item. Actually. So, we will know what happens to set up all those things, and then finally, what happens to communicate to him. So, we have to set up a VMI network for this. So, once when the VMI network is created, then we have to load all the data into the supplier actually. So, before which, what happens, the supplier must be created actually. So, we are now creating a VMI supplier. If I click on that. So he takes the responsibility of maintaining the stock. And if he is not maintaining the stock for more than two or three days in a month between the bandwidth of recommended ones, he will no more be a VMA supplier. So he'll be very much afraid. So you won't be what up as a deviate at all. He will not try to maintain it the levels. If I click on the home now and then go there, he will not create a supplier actually. I go to the procurement and then I go to the supplier and I click on suppliers. They're not going to get the VMA supplier actually. <clears throat> In reality, it will be real name. So we are not only for the understanding purpose, we are doing the name. The naming conventions are only for our own purpose. So go there. I will not click on the create supplier. We are now going to create a supplier actually. Fine, go there. I will not say it's a S01. Yes, Fine. I will not say VMI <laughs> underscore sub underscore one. Either way, business relations, sprint operation. Fine, go there. So it is going to be corporation. Fine. Well, this much is sufficient for us to create a bare minimum supplier. Fine, click on it. In reality, the payable team will be creating a supplier actually because they will not give every other thing. Fine, click on the dense number and other things. So they will be responsible for creating everything. Fine, click on now. So we are now creating a VMI supplier actually. Yes, zero one VMI sub. Everything is coming for that. So go ahead. <laughs> now in the payments, what happens? I'm going to make <laughs> what happens? The check payment is the default. Because vision is now fully set on check actually. So I'm not choosing the check now. Fine. Check is now fully set. Fine. I'm choosing. So vision is now we are working on the vision. Fine. Go there. So click on save. So by which what happens? The profile is now completed. So on the payments front, what happens? I have now made as a check. Now, now I go to the address and then let me create an address. <laughs> you go to address. Fine. Click on plus. We are now going to create an address. So click on plus one. We will now create an address for this. So it is the real address. You're going to find address what? It is one S01. Fine. I will now say VMI fine. Address address the name or whatever it is. Exactly. I will now put United States as the country. Fine. Always work on United States. It will be working very well on a test instance now, like mission instances will work very well on the United States. Fine. So I will now go to the place. I will now put what the postal code 10020 and then give it a tap. <clears throat> we are giving the postal code as one. You know, fine, click on the canal, fine. And then I will now give the address line also. Fine. Now say S01, fine. Address line one. You got it. And then ordering and remit is enabled. Fine. You are naming the order into fine with that. So the address is now done now. Fine. So click on it. And then give it save now. Fine. Give a save and close. Fine. So the address is now created. Fine. Click on save and close. Now we go and then create a contact actually. We go and create a contact. So before you create a contact, what happens? Uh, you must be what happens. Uh, you have to look at the VMI one. I click on it. Uh, I will now go to my documentation. I click on it. I will go to documentation. I will now go to what? See your CM training. I will now open up the Fusion procurement documentation. And then here I will now search for the VMI. Right? VMI. I'm going to search for it. 
So we have a VMA replenishment documentation under fusion procurement documentation. Okay. So open it up. Under fusion procurement documentation, we have a VMI replenishment documentation. We are now opening it up. And then whenever you are creating a supplier user, fine, I'm going to create a supplier user also. So the user must have these two roles enabled. Then only what happens, you'll be able to see the VMI replenishment from the supplier itself. Supplier can uh, very well create a replenishment request. We call them as RR now. The replenishment request will be created by the supplier only when he has these two roles. Right. By default, it won't be coming up. Right. So go back to us, yes. So go there. Now I will not go to the contacts. Now I click on the contacts. I'm not going to get a contact. <clears throat> I go to the click on plus. So here, what happens? I will not give the first name and last name. <clears throat> I will not say first name is what A1, and then last name is Nana Ananta Nana fine N1. So the system will not create a username like called A1 dot N1. Fine, that will be the username. Fine, I will not go there. I will not give it. If I A1 dot N1 fine, at the rate Gmail dot com. So the system creates a username called A1 dot N1 fine. That you want it. I will not go to the action and go to select that. So the address will be visible for you. Find select it and then click on apply. Click on apply and then click on. Now we are going to make a user account. So create a user account. So once when you create a user account for the contact, actually, so there are so many uh, what happens the six or seven roles are there on which normally what happens you won't find these two roles. These two roles will not be there, right. These two roles will not be there. So if it is coming automatically, it's okay. Otherwise, what happens you manually add the roles into the supplier actually, supply portal actually. No, 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 fine. So the contact is now created. Fine, with the contact. So uh, uh, made him as a user account. A one dot n one is the username. Fine, whether with the, the ready made user, no, fine. Ready made username. No roles are there. So click on seven rules by which what happens? The contact is now created. Now to create a site, he must be a procurement agent. Actually, we have already yesterday itself we have made him as a procurement agent. No, fine. So that also you must know. But how to create a procurement agent? Actually, so, so click on it. I will now make him as a procurement agent also. So click on it okay, now. Fine. Now going to make him procurement agent. So for which what happens? You go there, right click and then duplicate. And then I will now show you where we have made him as a procurement agent. Fine. Manage procurement agent is a task. Fine. Click on it. I will now go to the setup and maintenance. And then and go there. And then have a look at it. Fine. Click on it. And then and go to the place search. No, fine. Click on search. And then here what happens? Manage fine. procurement agent. So go to the manage procurement agent task. Fine. Go there. Click on it. And no query because we already created it. We are going to make a query now. Fine. Click on it. So here agent name is what? Student. Come on. Hello. Yeah, tell me. Yeah, somebody is asking something. Yes, excuse me, sir. Hello. Yeah, sir. Sameer is right. Yeah. Hello. Tell me, tell me. Sir, I may have to hear you. Yeah. Hello. Sir, the training is a, a functional right now. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Sameer it's a right? functional training. Yeah, yeah. It's a functional training. It's pure so, functional training. You will teach us the technical part also, or uh, no? Technical is not known to me. Only functional, purely functional. Technical is not known to me actually. Okay. I'm not aware of technical. So somebody has to be hired for the lecture. It's purely functional. Okay. Okay. You have to, you have to ask Amit to hire somebody for technical lecture. So we made a query for this. No fine. Is a student come up PRC one and then made a search. What happens? He got everything. And everything is there. So click on. So no. So now what happens? The student is already made as a procurement agent. Fine. So now what happens? You go to the sites. No fine. For creating a site, you must be a procurement agent. Fine, click on plus now. Fine, click on plus, and then here, whatever you go there. So click on plus, and then we will be creating a site. Actually, you know, going to create a site. Drop down the address. The address will be coming over here. Now, click on it. So it gets copied to the site. Here, whatever I will not change the site to what site one actually. Site one. So address name is now site one actually. And then once when you give a save, the remaining tab regions will be getting automatically enabled. Fine, click on save. You will now find all of the tab regions are getting enabled actually. Now, what happens? You go to the purchasing. Fine. You go to the purchasing area and click on the purchasing. And then here, what happens? You go there. And then, since he is taking the pains of maintaining the stock levels between either 100 or 200 or 300 or 400, so we will not pay him immediately. So he's going to pay under. So go there. Enable the pay under. Fine. Upon receiving it from him, what happens? We are going to make a payment immediately. So that is the what happens? We are giving as a what is our bonus now? Fine. Go there. And then what happens? Invoice summary level is what I will not say it's what packing slip. Now. So based upon the packing slip. Whichever he is providing it. So on this, what happened? The invoice gets created automatically on this. So is the pay on receipt with the packing slip as an invoice summary level. So we are now giving a pay on, on receipt. We are going to make a payment automatically. And then after having given this on the purchasing tab region, I go to the invoice tab region and go there. I don't drop down. I will not choose what US dollars. And then go there. The payment currency, what happens? I drop it down and then choose US dollars. And then I go to the site assignments. Now, fine. After having given the purchasing and then the invoicing, you go to the site assignments. I click on the site assignments. And then here, whatever you go there, I will not click on plus and then I will not put US one business unit. The US one, US one, and then give it up. 
So the year one doesn't mean there's no gun. Kind of way. So the shift location is Seattle, actually. So Seattle is the one Frank would have. That will be coming. Frank to Conrad. The build location is Seattle. Seattle. So, no. so we are now giving only the built location, shift location, whereas whatever the remaining ones will be given by the AP team, actually. The AP team will be given. Frank click on save and close. No, fine. No doubt. So the whole activity is now complete. Now, Frank click on it. <coughs> So, it's not done, fine. so the site is also created fine. So that what happens? Is that the whole activity of supply creation is now complete. So click on save and close. Now what happens? Is that we will now reset the passwords of a1.n1, and then we will now see whether the requisite uh, roles are added or not. Fine, click on. We'll not click on the home icon. Mm -hmm. Click on the home icon, and then here what happens? Is go to the tools. No, fine. Go to the tools because he is the VMI supply like You go to the tools, and then here I go to the security console, and then query for the a1.n1. Go that to and then I go to the users area, I click on it, I will not put it forward, a1.n1, and then make a search. Search for it, it will be coming. So it takes some time because it only just now saved. And all of so, okay, let it take some time. Right? Afterwards, only it will be able to do it. Then go to the next step. Now, what happens is we are going to establish the VMI network, actually. The VMI network is going to be established. Right? Well, click on it. So click on the home icon, and then we are going to establish the VMI network, actually. <clears throat> we are going to establish the VMI network. Click on it. Go there. So go to this place, I will not go to what? Supply chain planning. I will not go to the supply chain planning. And then here, what happens? We'll be having a supply collaboration. So this icon will be coming only when you have certain roles, actually. Right? You'll go there. I will not hear what happens. I will not go and then query my PRC21. Find PRC21. So here, there are certain roles which are required for getting the supply collaboration icon in this place. Right? So go there. So I'll not query for it. Now I click on it. I will not add these roles. Mm -hmm. So we had to add these roles. So we had to add what? Supply chain planner. You know, take a copy of it. Right? So the user must have, the person who is now setting up the VMI must have these roles. I click on edit. Now click on the add roles. I'm going to add roles. So paste it over here. I click on it. Supply chain planner. So is the aura I'm choosing it now. I click on aura I'm choosing it. Supply chain planner. Aura I'm choosing it now. <laughs> so select it and then click on add role membership. It is now added. And then afterwards, what happens? Supply chain, supply chain collaboration planner. Fine, we'll not go there. So this role is required. Fine, take off it. We'll not go there. So go to this place. Fine, click on it. Supply chain collaboration planner. Click on over. And select it. And then click on add role membership. It is now added. Next is what? Supply chain applications administrator. So next is what? Supply chain applications administrator. We'll go there and go there. Click on it. We'll not paste it over here. Click on it. Supply chain application. So over. Select it. And then click on add role membership. That is added. The final role is what? Supply chain integration specialist. So these are four major roles which are required for a VMI activity. The person who is setting up the VMI must have these roles. Actually. Supply chain integration specialist. So click on it over and then choose it and then click on add roles. So click on that. But in fact, what happens if we are given what? PRC all. So PRC all is a top role for procurement. And so what happens, everything is there in the vision instance. And then in the field, you won't have the PRC all and all. So you have to add the remaining roles manually only. So click on save and close. So we are added. So if these roles are added, then what happens, you'll be getting this supply collaboration icon. But since the PRC all is there, it's coming. But in the field, you won't have any PRC all because PRC all is only for the vision instances actually. Client instances will not have a PRC all. In which case, what happens, you have to add all these four roles manually actually. So go there. So click on it. And then here, automatically, you'll go and then load and log in now. So, so sign out and sign in. And then see whether our A1N1 is now sensed with the system or not. Right? Click on it. Go there. Close it. And then come inside. We'll now have a look at whether A1 and N1 is now sensed or not. Right? Click on it. I will now go to the tools. I will now go to the tools. And then I go to the security console. No, I click on the security console. So tool security console is the one I'm going over there. I click on it. I will not go to the users. No, fine. I will not query for the supplier user actually. Fine. It is a one dot n one. Fine. Entry now. So it is not sensed actually. I go there. So click on it. So first of all, we will now reset the password for us to log in. Now, fine. Click on reset password. I will go to the password. So we are not giving a password now. So, so click on reset password. So the password is not getting used. And then we will not edit and then see whether the roles are there now. If I click on edit and then go there. So click on add roles. So in the bottom, what happens? You go there. So we'll not see whether we have these roles or these two roles are mandated. Now, if I click on it, supply demand planner is required. I'm going to go there, have a look at it. The system has added automatically certain roles. Now, right? Supply demand planner is already added. Otherwise, we have to click on add and then add a role. And then supplier inventory manager is also required. 
supply and inventory manager. So supplier inventory manager seems to be not there. Now I can go down and how but so supplier inventory manager is not there. So we'll know ID. So those two roles are required for a VMA activity. So supply demand planner is there, but inventory manager is not there. Frank, you can add and then you know, add the inventory manager role. So supplier inventory manager role. So you'll know, take it off it, you know, paste it on this one for you. Okay. So supplier inventory manager Ora, we are choosing a non click on Ora. Select it and then click on add roles now. You know, non click on that. So, so it is all done now. Right? So everything is done. Fine, right? So click on save and close by which what happens there? Uh, A1.n1 is now ready. Fine. Username or A1.n1 is there. So everything is there. Fine, right? So username is A1.n1. Fine, click on save and close. Supplier can very well log. Okay. So click on that. And now what happens? We'll now go and then log in on the A1.n1. Fine, right? no, that's <laughs> not. You now go to home and then take a copy of it. So log for that. So click on the Edge browser in which what happens? I'm going to log in as A1.n1. He's a supplier who is logging in. So we are in uh, Bombay and then he is in Delhi actually. Because they, so he is in a different place from Osnap. He is now logging in from that place. The URL is going to be same actually. Supplier URL and then our URL are all same actually. He is now going to log in. So you must have a supplier portal license first. If you don't have a supplier portal license, what happens? It will not be possible. Now, click on it. Given it, now, click on it. <laughs> so click on the home icon. The top, the right one, home icon. And then here, what happens? You go there. You go to the supplier portal. Fine, click on the supplier portal. And then click on the supplier portal again. So once when you give a supplier portal, you will now see the VMA part is coming. So these two entries will be coming only when you have the demand player, demand planner, as well as what happens you on this thing now. And then inventory manager, supplier inventory manager, and then supplier demand planner. If these two roles are there, then you will be getting the VMA activity on this one. Fine. It will be in the, so, not, so as of now, it is not requiring any attention because nothing has been loaded to him at all. So we will now go to our system and then here what happens, we will now go there. We will now go to our system. We will now go there. And then set up what you are this thing. I will go there. So we will now set up the VMA network. We will go to set up the VMA network. I click on the home icon. Go there. So here what happens, we go there. I will now go to what? Supply chain planning. I will now go to the supply chain planning. Go there. We will now go to the supply chain planning. So go there. We will now go to the supply chain planning. Supply chain planning and going over there. In the supply chain planning, what happens is we'll be having a supply collaboration. So click on the supply collaboration of the supply chain planning, and then we will now set up the VMA network for this. Supply collaboration, the VMA network. So click on the supply collaboration on the supply chain planning, and then we are going to set up the VMA network for this. So you click on that task list on the right hand side, and then go there. On the task list, what happens? The bottom, what happens? We have a manage VMA network. So these things will all be taught in a planning training, actually. When you undergo a planning, what happens, they'll be doing it now. Right? Click on the manage VMA network. So here, we are going to set up the VMA network. Right? Click on plus. So go there. So we are going to set up the VMA network. The organization is what? The organization is Seattle. Right? Yes, C-A-T-T-L-E. Mm -hmm. You go there. You know, it's, not, it's not coming. Right? Zero, zero, 001, maybe. Zero, zero, 001, it will come. It's not coming. So the supplier is what? We'll not put yes, zero, 001. Right? It is a VMA supplier, actually. Yes, zero, 001, VMA supplier. So the scope, if I say organization, it will now pick up the 100 and 200 from the item attribute. If I take it as a sub inventory, it will now pick up 300 and 400. Let me take it up as 300. So which is the item? Find the item is what? S01. And then the VMA item. Actually. And then I have to choose the sub inventory. Find. After having given the scope. So depending upon the scope of it, what happens? It will now pick up either 100 and 200 and then load it to supplier. Or 300 and 400, it will now load to supplier. Now we are given a sub inventory. It will now pick up the 300 and 400 and load to the supplier. Or to the supplier actually. I click on it. So click on it. And then I will now say store to the sub inventory. So go there. Store. And then I make a search. Now I click on search. We are having a store sub inventory. Select it. And then click on apply. And then click on OK. So the sub inventory is not. Now the default min max quantity source is what? Enterprise. Enterprise means what is our supplier means what his note. So if you choose enterprise from our system, what happens the information will be picked up from the sub inventory of 300 and 400 that will be loaded actually. So likewise, what happens if there will be so many items are there. So we had to what happens to set up each and every item on every item supplier combination will be having an entry over here. So the VMA network is now fully set. Thank you for The VMA set up the VMA network. So likewise, what happens uh, if you have got 50 items for one supplier and then another 50 items for second supplier. So every everything will be having an entry over here. So making an entry is one time exercise. So you have to make all the entries. So the VMA network is established for a sub inventory sourcing at the enterprise level. Fine enterprise means what? Our system sector. And supplier we will not see tomorrow. There are two things are there. One is the supplier so supplier level and then enterprise level. So enterprise we are seeing it tomorrow. We will not see this, uh, what happens at uh, supplier level. 
again here what happens either the org level or sub inventory level if it is the org level it will not pick up the 100 and 200 and then load it to the supplier if it is the sub inventory it will not pick up 3 and then 400 and load it to the supplier on that. now what happens we are going to do the full we are going to load all the vmi data into the supplier's area now click on we are going to load it so go there so for which what happens i will not run refresh vmi replenishment data find the es job so we are going to run it now so once when you run this es job so whatever you set up on the vmi network will be loaded to all the what happens the collaborating suppliers actually so they are collaborating with us in maintaining the stock levels right they will not go in. so we will not load it to them and then whatever we go which whatever we will not have what i will not have on and on click on will not have on and click on click on the home and then let us not have on so we have to maintain between 300 and 400 what happens i go to the supply chain execution and then i go to the inventory management i go to the supply chain management and then go to the inventory management and then let us now keep a stock level on 001 when the organization 001 so there i am going to keep a stock of let us say 75 to go there so click on it and then we will not keep a stock right? click on it create miscellaneous transaction we're going to do it so go there it's what miscellaneous reserve now right? click on it you're going to give a miscellaneous reserve. miscellaneous reserve and then here account is what okay uh -huh. so i'll not choose the first one now right? click on okay this is the offset account actually the offset account fine i will not say is a yes no fine we have seen all those things in the costing area fine click on plus <laughs> And then I will not put the item point for the S01 and then give it to the item. I will not keep a quantity of 75. The item is not visible. So if you expand this line, what happens? It will be visible on my sub inventory is what stores. So that is where we wanted the external supplier to maintain the levels between 300 and 400. I click on 75. 75 and then go there. So click on submit by which one of the transaction gets completed. So now the transaction is completed. Since we have done a major job before we push it, load it to the suppliers, what happens? You load and load. Because we have not set up the VMA network also. So, if preferably, what happens is log out and log in for the changes for the system to sense actually, you know, logging out and logging in. So, the system will not change all the senses, all the changes you made, especially to the VMA network. Now, fine, go there. Now, what happens? You go there. I will not go to the tools. I will not go to the tools. I will not go to the tools. And then here, what happens? I will not go to the scheduled process. Image, what happens? We are going to run a scheduled process first. Now, go there. Come on. Now, take up the scheduled process. What? Refresh VMA and replenishment data. So this is going to load all the collaborators. You find all the collaborators with whatever with whatever has been set on the VMA network actually. It will be sensing it now. Click on it. And then paste it up. And then give it app. And then give it app now. Click on it. Refresh VMA. So this is the one. Refresh vendor managing inventory. Refresh management data. Click on it. So everything will be loaded to all the suppliers. So now what happens? You can even run it for a specific org supplier or item, but normally you run it for everything. So it will be for all like right? if you leave all the parameters blank, it will be running for all the items, all the supplier and all the organization. Thank you for that. All items, all supplier. All so there's no running. Don't go there tomorrow. So now our supplier will be having one data available. You know running. So if you go to the suppliers area, thank you for that. Then here say requiring attention is nothing actually. So once when the concurrent is now complete, he will know he has to do one thing. Now. Thank you for that. He has to do one thing. So the refresh VMI data is now complete enough and succeeded. Now what happens? We will go there. We will not log out of this and then we will not come back. Thank you. Here what happens on the info let we will be getting one requiring attention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll go there. Sign out. We are going to sign out. Now thank you. Sign out. And then we will now again sign in. So the supplier is signing. He is now in Delhi. We are in Bombay. So he is now signing in. So we will be frequently signing in. Now thank you. Thank you. Sign in. And then you will now have to sign out. You will now have in the info let itself what happens. Requiring attention is going to come. It will be coming as what? Requiring attention. So the info let is now saying one activity requires your attention actually. He will now click on the info let. When you click on the info let, he will now say what is requiring an attention. Then click on it. It needs an attention. So go there. So this is the item. And then this is what? On and is 75. And then here what happens? On and is 75. Now is the on and present on and is 75. He has to maintain the stock levels between 300 and 400. So remember, if he maintains the stock level at 600 or 700, he will be shouting. Management will be shouting, oh, you are maintaining too much stock. If he is maintaining only 100, 200, then also they will shout. So his task is really very difficult now. Fine. Within the bandwidth, he has to maintain our stock actually. The bandwidth. So even if it is too much, what happens? It will be allowing. We'll know so when I click on the info let icon, this screen is coming. We cancel now. So we can even come to the screen by what? By what? Go in the navigation. Now. Fine. Click on the manage inventory. Fine. Click on the manage inventory. Through this also, I can go. Fine. Go there. I will not put item what yes zero one, and then give a tab now. Yeah, yeah. So drop it down and then choose the item, and then click on search now. Fine, click on search. It will be coming. 
So, it, so this way also you can either through the infrared or through the navigation you can come over here. So he has seen it. Now what happens? He has to bring in. He has to always bring it to the maximum level because the consumption is now continuous actually. So from 75 he has to bring it to 300, 400. Now. So 325 stocks he has to give a RR. Now. So he has to give a replenishment request for 325. But let us say he is not having that much of a stock now. So he will know he has got only 250 now. So for whatever he is having it, he will now send RR. And click on cancel. And remember, his task is to maintain between 300 and 400. So click on the, the afterwards, whatever you know, go to the manage replenishment request is the one final account. From there, whatever the, he is going to create a RR. RR is nothing but replenishment. You can find that. So click on plus. So click on plus. And then he will be creating an RR. You will not put the item. Right? Yes, zero, one. Mm -hmm. You know, put the item away now, click on it. So the organization is what? 001, now fine, click on it. So everything else is automatically populating now, fine, go there. Supplier site is not coming, fine. Go there and then query for the site and click on search. Supplier site, you can put it. So click on OK. Now coming. So he is now doing it, remember. Quantity is what? 250, because he's having only 250 now. So even though he has to replenish for 325, but he's not having it now, fine. <clears throat> you will now say, no stock. So because of which, what happens, you know, only giving it now. So if you go and then see the screen now, fine, go there. So once when he submits this RR, fine, once when the RR is now submitted, fine, the supplier submits the RR, a scheduled process runs to transform the request into a requisition actually. Fine. It automatically comes into this and then do it and then land up on the, our area. So in uh, uh, so in process, uh, it will be going into what? In process actually. It will not go there and then go to the in process. So here what happens, he is going to say, what happens, to whom he is going to send actually, fine. The replenishment will request, fine, go there, come out. And then here, what happens? The requester is the name has to come now. Fine, click on it. Uh, oh God. One second. Give a cancel now. Fine. Uh, uh, we might have forgotten to give the requester's name on the VMA area. Fine, go on. No, go there. So we might have forgotten it. Fine, go there. So click on the home icon. Fine. I might have forgotten to give the requester's name here. Now. Fine, go on. I will not go to what? The supply planning, supply chain planning. I will not go to the supply chain planning. <clears throat> I must have where exactly it has to go and then land. No, click on it. I will not go to the supply collaboration. Click on supply collaboration. And then here you go there, click on it. You will not go to the what's called VMA network. Fine. Go to the manage VMA network. The VM, uh, you go there. So I will not query for the what happens. The supplier now. Fine. Go there. S01 is the supplier. Fine. Go to no. And then click on search. You will be getting one entry now. Fine. Click on it. And then click on edit now. In the edit, what happens? You go there. And then click on edit again now. Fine. Click on edit. And then here, what happens? The requisitions requester must be there now. It has to land up on whom actually? It has to land up on PRC21 lot student. So I will now say student, fine, comma, PRC21. So this is the one. So it has to land up on his login actually. So it is sub-inventory replacement setting. So sub-inventory is replacement setting has to be defective on login. So it is no set actually. The requisition requester is no set, fine, go there, click on save and close. So this has to be given while you're creating it actually. So click on so requesting requester has been done. So I have not done it. Fine, click on it. So otherwise, what happens? Twice edit and then do it. Now. After saving it, what happens? You give any edit and then do it. Now click on it. It's not done. So it's all done. Now fine, click on it. And then here, what happens? You go there. You will not come to this place. Now fine, click on it. And then you will not give it done. And then you will not again log out and log in. Now fine. because the change has been made on the source system actually. There also, what happens? You will not log out and log in. So you will not log out and log in for the changes to take effect actually. In sign out and sign in. So when you make a change, what happens? Keep it a habit of what? Logging out and logging in actually. Now you go there. And here, what happens? You go there. So here also, what happens? You sign out and sign in. So it will be landing up on PRC21's login now. PRC21's login. So click on A1 and .n1. The password is coming. It's all coming. Right now. So you, what happens? You go to the manager replenishment request now. Go to the manager replenishment. So click on plus now. Click on plus. Item is what? S01. You're giving it now. I click on it. So the organization is going to be so and so fine. The supplier site might go there, drop it down, and then choose the supply site. Click on search now. Select it and then click on OK. So the quantity is what 250. We are giving it now. 250 is the quantity. Fine, give it a tab now. Click on it. I will not say it's a low stock. So once when he submits it, what happens? It will be going into in process. It will not go to in process. And then once when the requisition gets approval, it is the automatic approval. So whenever a demand flows into the purchasing, the purchasing from either from Minmax to or VMI to purchasing or inventory to purchasing, Minmax to purchasing or from a, whatever the sales order to purchasing or planning to purchasing, all the external demands will be getting automatically approved. So uh, the position is now approved and then create it. 
So once when the recognition gets uploaded, so from a, upon submission, it will not go to in process. And after some time, what happens? It will be going to request back. Request means what? The requisition is now created actually. So click on submit. So by which what happens? The requisition gets created actually. It is now in the submitted phase. So it has now been submitted by the what happens? The supplier who is sitting in Delhi, and then it will now come to Mumbai now. And then it will now enter into the login of what? Your PRC21 dot requester. Fine, student actually. And then from there, what happens? The requisition, the external requisition will get automatically approved. So there is no internal approval required because this is a demand given by an external system actually. Any demand which is coming from an external system do not need any approvals at all. And it will all be getting automatically approved. So if you go on that, what happens? Refresh it. What happens? It will not go to in process. And then finally, what happens? It will not go there. I will not worry about that. I don't know. What happens? Uh, item is what? S01. And then give it. I have no. I click on it. Drop it down. And then choose the item of I click on search now. I click on search. And I cannot see it. Whatever the request is what happens? It's no requested actually. It will go to in process also for some time. And then afterwards, what happens? Submitted in process and then finally requested. Requested means what? The requisition is now created for 20 days. Now we have to come over here and then the purchase officer has to convert this into a purchase order actually. We'll not go there. We'll not go there. We'll not go to what? We'll not go to this place. We'll not log in now. We will not we'll go to the purchasing department, then we'll get a purchase order actually. We are not going to make a purchase order more click on it. So the procurement department will now make a purchase order. I click on the purchasing, and then you go to the purchase orders, and then I will now go on and process the requisition actually. So click on the what happens the task list, and then go to the process requisition the top. No, I click on the process requisition top. Since there is an automatic approval, it will be landing up on the process requisition area. It will be landing up on the process requisition area. So I will now say the buyer. I will now remove it, and then the requisitioning be is what US one business unit, and then make a search. No, I click on search. And then you will now find the requisition landing up on the process requisition. So this is the first one. Thank you. Is zero one? We made a There are so many items there. This is one. Fine. Select it. And then click on Add to Document Builder. You are going to add it. And then the supplier is already there on the requisition. So the RR itself is having the the requisition is now having the supplier actually. So there is no source agreement at all. Fine. The supplier is there, but what happens? No, no source agreement. And so click on OK. Fine. If you have a BPA, it will now get converted into PU also automatically. And click on OK now. Fine. The source agreement is okay. Now coming. In the bottom, what happens? You go there and then click on create by which what happens? We are now creating as a purchase order. So the purchase order is now created actually. And then we will now submit it for approval actually. So before approving it, what happens? We will now see whether who is going to approve. It must be automatic. So if it is automatic, what happens? We will now submit for approval. So or rather, we will now submit for approval. It will be getting approved. So we are now converting it the PR into PO. The PR to PU automation you can very well do now. Fine, click on it. Is 164975 is the one. Fine, click on it. And then here, 164975 is coming. Fine. Click on the manage approval. You will not see whether approval is automatic or not for 20 quantities. You will not see whether automatic approval is now enabled or not. Fine, click on it. 164975 is the one. Fine, 164975 is the one. The application developer is there and click on submit. Upon submitting it, what happens? It will be getting approved. So 164975 is the one which is now getting submitted now. I will not go there, right like, click on the top. What happens? You will not go to the receipt. No, click on. So the document is now submitted for 164975. I will not go there. I will not click on duplicate and then we will not go to the receiving area. We are going to make a receipt. Now. And remember, it is a pay on receipt actually. In the pay on receipt. So we go there. So here, what happens? You now wait for the what happens? This thing, no, fine, click on it. So I will now say, uh, buyer is what? This is the one, no, fine, click on it. So he is the buyer. Well, no, made it. No, fine, click on search. No, fine, click on search. You now see the process requisition. You have no, no, done now. You will now go to what? Manage orders. You go to the manage orders and then query for it. Manage orders. Supplier is what? S01. And then give it a tap. So for the supplier, what happens? You make a search. You click on search. You will now find that the purchase order is under approval, actually. It will be coming into pending. Oh, now it is open also. So that means what we can very well receive now. Fine, go there. Now we will now go to the what? We will now go to the supply chain execution now. Fine, go there. I will now go to the supply chain execution. And then here, what happens? You go to the inventory management. You go to the inventory management. Fine, go there. Click on it. So go there. Here, what happens? You go to the receipts now. Fine, go to the receipts. In the receipts, what happens? You go to the receive expected shipments. You go to the receive expected shipments. Fine, go there. So US 164975 is the one. Fine, US. 164975 is the purchase order number. It is on the 001 organization. Then make a search. 
So he has supplied all the 250 now, and click on it, and then click on resume. So click on it. So in the meantime, what happens? You go there. So once with the purchase order is now created and then awaiting for buyer's approval, fine. And then it will be in review. And then once when the PO is approved, it will be getting closed also. You know, have a look at it. Right? The review, you have not seen it. I'm click on it. And then if you refresh it, what happens? It will be getting closed. It will be in review. So when the PO is approved, what happens? It will be getting closed. So the RR gets closed upon the PO getting approved. So once when the PO is created, it will be in review. And then once when the PO is approved, what happens? It will be closed. Remember, approval of PO is under our system. Whereas approval of PR is not under our control at all. This is the external one. It gets auto approved. Whereas PO will now go through our approval process actually. So in review, I want to show that I have forgotten it. You know, going to close. Fine, the purchase of approves, and then you know, close. The RR is closed actually. Fine, the activity of RR is now complete. I'm going to come on. Come on, you know, come on. I'm not selected, and then we are going to receive it. Fine, click on receive. We are going to receive it. So we are going to receive it. Fine, click on it. So go there. The receiving section is now going to receive. Fine, go there. I will not click on the show receive quantity. It will not show you how much is now expected. Two fifty is expected. Then click on create receive. Now a GR number gets created. Go there. Here I will not give a packing slip number. I will not say what happens there, packing clip number, nana underscore one, two, three. So this will now form part of your, what happens there, uh, your uh, invoice actual. Invoice number, fine. The packing slip number will be the invoice number actual. I will not say three units are there, click on it, and then go the VBIL number is one, so and so, and then bill of lighting number is so and so, and the notes, what happens there, notes one, some some notes we are giving, <clears throat> right. Uh, short supply. <clears throat> so he is not able to supply from short supply. So he has to replenish in 320 What happens in this much only has separate? So you know, I'm fine. Click on submit. So the GR number gets created. Now, fine. Click on submit. So this number will now become the invoice number. Fine. Now, one, two, three. Fine. Click on submit. Now, fine. That will become the invoice number. So click on submit. Fine. So the GR number is now getting created. Fine. 52620. We will now go on the delivery down. Fine. Click on the now. Now go there and then do the put away. 52620. The one I'm going to make a put away. So the receipt is now done. Fine. Click on it. I will now perform a put away. Fine, click on the private. 52620, fine. 52660, six, so I'm not exactly, no, in fact, you know, sorry, no. I will not search on this. 526, I'm going to, oh God, There's so many things are coming now. <laughs> click on it, no, fine. So, what are the purchase order number, fine. US 164975, uh, isn't it? I will not remove the result number and then make a search, no, fine, click on search. I will not see the purchase order number, fine. It is US 164975. 164975 is the one. So make a search. Now. So it is what is what. 52620. So select and then click on put again. We are going to perform put again. 50 will put again. So click on submit. So it has been put now. So since we are going to make a payment on receipt, what happens? We will now run what? Send pay. Fine. The transaction is completed. Fine. Click on now. We will now run a send pay actually. We will now go there. Click on it. We will now go to what? You go to the tools and then go to the schedule to process. We will now go to the tools. Mm -hmm. Along with the tools, and then go to the schedule to process. And then here we are going to run what send the pay. Fine, send pay will now push all the reserve data into the payables. No, fine. So send percentage pay percentage. Send pay is the one. Send, send pay on the point. Click on it. And then it. Whatever has been received will be pushed into the payables. No? Transaction source is what is the ERS now. Evaluated receipt settlement. Then come in Receipt number is what 526 something. Fine. We don't know whatever we leave it and then make it zero. Fine. For all the receipts which are eligible for ERS, fine, it will all be converted into a payable invoice. You know, running now. So, you know, now, the import order invoice will be running automatically. Send pay on receipt is not running. So, the import payables invoice is not running now. Click on it. So, the import payables invoice is running. So, once it is completed, whatever you can now see the invoice getting created actually. Import payables. So the send pay on receipt is now importing the invoice automatically. So go there. Now the report is also running. In the meantime, whatever they go there, right click and then duplicate. Mm -hmm. And then we'll now go on then make a payment. Now fine. The distributions are getting automatically created. Now fine. The distributions are getting automatically created because it is a it is a pay on receipt actually. So the pay on receipt will now create the distributions automatically when click on it. So once when the invoice report is completed, you'll now have a look at it when click on the report. And then the bottom what happens, you can very well see the invoice number also for the to output. So the report, what happens, we can very well republish, when click on republish, we are going to republish it, when click on it. And then click on the star icon, export to PDF. We are exporting into PDF. So go there, click on it. Open the PDF report now, when click on it, you'll now see the invoice. 
So it's the ER is invoice fine. So my packing slip number will now form part of the invoice number. So for every packing slip, what happens is it generate separate invoice number. So it's having a prefix and then a running number also. It's a three component part of an invoice number. So two of D along with all the taxes put together around 2,750. So the one now fine. So ER is invoice there, frankly call it. So now what happens, we'll now go there and then query the invoice actually. We'll now go to the place, frankly. I will now click on the home icon. I will now go to the payables, fine. We go to the payables, no frankly call it. I will now go to the payables. And then we will now, what happens, we are going to, what happens, uh, the invoice is already done now, fine, because I got, we'll now go that tomorrow. We'll now go to the payables. Separate the execution and then go to payables. If I click on the payables and then go to the invoices. To go to the invoice. So we will now query the created invoice actually. If I click on it, I will now go to the manage invoices. Fine. We will now go to the manage invoices. And then let us now query for the invoice which has been created. Supplier report is what? S01. And then give it a tap. Supplier is coming. Fine. So with this information, we can search now. Fine. We'll be getting the ER as the invoice. Now, fine. So three days. Fine. You can even say three days only. Fine. We have just now created. So three days is okay. Fine. Click on go. So click on the hyperlink of it. Click on the hyperlink. <laughs> so it is not validated. No approval is required actually. Fine. Click on the hyperlink. So no approval is required because it's automatic actually. So coming over there. With the manual one, then only what happens, the approval is becoming fine with the account. So not valid. You go to actions and then go to validate. It's not valid. Fine, click on actions. Validate. So we are going to validate it. Fine, we are now validating it actually. So once when the invoice gets validated, it becomes eligible for a payment actually. So it's now valid. Now what happens, you go to the actions and then here what happens, you will know what happens, pay in full. We are going to make a payment in full. So we are now going to make a payment in full. Now, if I click on the pay in full. So now you can, you will now eligible for a payment in full actually. So bank account is what? We will now choose BOFA now, fine. BOFA is the one. And then the payment process profile, you drop down. I will now choose another one, fine. I will now say standard check now, fine. I will now say standard will be available between A and D. And then give a tab now, fine. Click on it. So it's a standard check format now, fine. Standard check format. I am choosing it now, fine. Click on it. And then go there. So remit to account. Click on the account. Is going to account of fine, go there. make a search. It's not required actually. And then payment document, fine, go there. Payment document, fine, go there. So it'll not say strict stock. So you're now giving a payment number also, fine, 4030011. Fine, click on submit by which one of them, the presses, the payment. The check payment is now getting processed and then you'll be issued a check. So we honor the supplier by making an immediate payment actually because he is now maintaining the stock levels in our inventory. Fine, click on the stock, click on submit. So by which one of the payment is now made, fine, the payment has been created. So if you go to the purchase orders and then have a look at it, now I click on it, you can now see everything. We will now click on it. Make a search now. We can see the purchase order life cycle. We can very well see what we have done on the payments. So go to the space and click on it. And then supplier one. Uh, it has to come up. Zero one VM is supplier one. So manage orders. Fine. Click on search now. It has to show me. There's no waiting for it. But it's not showing me. Uh, use one business unit. EMI supplier. Uh, why is not showing me? Click on search now. The supply is there actually. So manage orders is there. So click on done now. And we can very well see this one. Right? Click on it. We'll now go to what manage orders. US one six four six nine pairs on the eleven. And uh, US one six four. So click on search now. And click on search. It has shown me this. Thing. The one there is one you see now. Click on it. The supplier is what P01 is now running 164. <clears throat> it's all fully paid actually. Click on search now. Click on 164 uh, 975. No, 965. I think 965 is our question. And then make a search for the search. I will not say include closed documents. I will not say yes. It's already closed actually. Include closed document. Thank you. Search now. Find it. It's already closed because it's all the only fully paid actually. Status is what? Closed. Let me click on search now. 1649. <laughs> click on search now. Let me go there. It's not coming. It's not coming. No, no. Oh, it's not. Status is closed only. Fine. Click on it. So once when you go on and look at it, now click on the status is closed. Click on the 164975 actually. 196975. So click on it. And then you can now see the life cycle of this. Now click on it. is ordered, received, delivered, and invoiced also. Right? Click on the view details. Click on the view details. You can now find everything. So go back on it. You now receipt number is this. Now find the bottom bottom will be having invoice number. If you click on the invoice, you will now see the payment details also. If you click on the invoice, you can now see the payment details also. So go click on it. If you go to the payments, fine, click on the payments, you can now see the payments also. So all the payments have been made and with all the taxes and the things. 
So in a VMI process, what happens? The supplier is supposed to maintain the stock levels between the recommended levels. Had we chosen organization, he has to maintain between 100 and 200. Whereas if you choose what? sub inventory, he has to maintain between these. No coming. So the payments area, whatever the ratio is. So what a payment has been made, you'll be able to see it. Mm -hmm. So the complete life cycle of the PO can be very well seen actually, it's not fully closed. And then if you go there here, what happens, you go there. So click on done and then have a look at it. Now, click on it. You'll now go to the word, manage inventory. Fine, click on the manage inventory. And then here, we will now go there, S01. And then give it have now. Drop it down and choose it now. Fine, click on it. And then click on search. <clears throat> now, the stock level, what happens, it has now gone to 325. So we have received it. Fine. So we have 75 plus 220 is now 325. So it is now showing on green actually. Green means what is okay. Fine. So it has to be maintained between 3 and 4 and is now okay. So tomorrow when the stock level goes down, what happens? The green will go away and then he has to again, what happens? Send RR. So this process will not keep on doing it. So on all the days, he has to keep the levels between the bandwidth actually. Then only we will now remain as a VMI supplier actually. Otherwise what happens? You will now lose the job. Somebody else will become the job. If he is not maintaining the stock levels between 300 and 400 for what happens, uh, uh, at least um, uh, what happens uh, uh, in a 28, 27 or 28 days in a month actually. Only one or two days is allowed fine, to, uh, to go beyond the stock. So level maintenance, stock level maintenance, outsourcing is the best job because you will not leave the headache to them. Let them decide. Fine. Because if you place, a, if you through MinMax, if you place a purchase order, he will not say suddenly, sir, I'm not having a material, so we wait for some time. So our production may even come to, if the raw material, then what happens, the production may even come to a halt actually. So instead, hand over the job of maintaining the stock level to him, so that what happens, he will not take the responsibility. You will not say, if you are not maintaining it for 27 days in a month, what happens, you will no more be a VMI supply for us in the next month actually. So he will not take stock, even if he is not having a stock, he will not try to arrange it from some other place or other, and then some or other, he will not make the RR actually. So this is on VMI actually. I hope that you understood it. Got it. So bye for now. And then, got it, sir. Yeah. Yeah, got it. Very good, very good. So now what happens? You talk to your Amit also regarding who is going to give you technical training. You're asking for technical training. Okay, sir. Let me stop. Right. You are in the technical training. You okay. are really functional actually. Ask him for the technical training. So bye for now. And then tomorrow is holiday, isn't it? Yes. Yes, sir. Tomorrow we have all data. So we will not meet on Monday. We will not meet on Monday morning. Fine. Bye, Pam. Yeah. Sure, sure. Bye. Bye, Pam. Bye, bye, bye.